All right. So this is episode. We ain't doing numbers because it's it's random and it's pretty yeah, recorded. pretty much yeah. yeah. With that weirdness with episode one. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Welcome this is an episode of, of fantasy, F3. <laughs> fandom, and fun shit. Yes. Yep. Yes. F three. Yeah. So uh, this evening's topic: variable difficulty in gaming. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, initially. My my thought process with this, kind of what we discussed a little bit earlier, and honestly, since like we worked at Best Buy, I'm pretty sure we've talked about this off and on with different games mm-hmm. that have come out. Yeah. 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 How, in my opinion, uh, looking at different controversies, air quotes, Yeah. especially in the last couple of years, like with the release of Sekiro, uh, Demon Souls coming out, Cuphead, not, I mean, being a little while ago, but not too far off, Dark that Souls was, 3. That was a couple years ago. Yeah, it was around the Dark Souls 3 time, I think. It was like, uh, or was it before that? No, I think, I think Cuphead came out after Dark Souls 3, but it was... Yeah. Anyway. Wait, well... Did, didn't it come out or like around a Dark Souls three re release or something? Something like that. It came okay. out and then they it, well they re released it on the Switch as well. Yeah, yeah. But that must be what we're thinking of then. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> moving on from that, uh, the games we just mentioned in particular: the Soulsborne, the Cupheads, the Reven or was it Remnant? Return to Ashes or Return from Ashes? Ah, there that was a game. Sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're all relatively difficult games. Mm-hmm. Very difficult games. And they do not have a easy mode. There is nope. no difficulty scaling whatsoever aside from your skill level and how far you progress. Yep. Because in all honesty, in some of those games, the later <laughs> bosses are wildly easy, but it's based off the fact that you know the mechanics at that point. Yes. So all that suffice to say is uh, you were saying that it depends on how it's marketed. Yes. So basically, my the controversy that comes along with these types of games is basically that do we have games with variable difficulties so it's more available for people of lower skill levels versus people who want more of a challenge that can then crank up the difficulty but if you look at a lot of the trends in very in a lot of the soulsborne games is the mm-hmm. fact that they don't have that sliding scale yeah. it's everything is as it is when you log in this is the enemies, this is what you're up against, and the only change is, like you said, where you are in the game and how good you are. That yes. is your difficulty meter, basically. Yeah. So when you have a game like Dark Souls and it being marketed, my point is when it's being marketed as a Soulsborne game. And it says prepare to die in the tagline. Basically, yes. When they first show it to you, prepare yes. to die. And that that being a no don't give me a variable skill level, like easy mode, whatever, hard mode, what mm-hmm. have you. If the point of this game is to kick my shit in, it should be kicking my shit in through the entire game. Yes, it should be challenging and pushing you all the way. No problem with that. But games, other games, I think, are definitely ones that do, the like, the variable uh, uh easy modes and that kind of thing i think are also required for other games that people are like i just want to have fun with this yeah like there's plenty of times when i'm sitting down to play a video game and i'm just like i don't want to deal with constantly dying i don't want to deal with like having to replay through a level a bunch of times Mm -hmm. i just want to have fun with this so let me put it on easy mode and just kill some stuff or let me just solve some puzzles real simply. Yeah. But if I turn on Dark, Dark, uh, Dark Souls. Yeah. If I turn on Bloodborne. You turn on Demon Souls. You turn on Cuphead. Fuck, you turn on Doom. Yeah, Doom has the variable thing. But even on its easiest difficulty, it's a lot more difficult than a lot of other games out there. Titan Cyber Demons still show up on easy. Oh, definitely, yes. There you go. But if I'm putting in one of those games, my goal is to have that feeling of oh my god i just spent half an hour going up against this one (laughs) boss and i have finally finally made it (laughs) yeah it's surmounting that challenge and see that's i'm right there with you the marketing is what sells it if like i said with 
Dark Souls Prepare to Die, Cuphead, just just to kind of go and bounce back and forth between some of these titles because they're the ones that have been brought up recently. Mm-hmm. Cuphead looked looked fun, looked cutesy, in in the yeah. old eighties style, not eighties, what? <laughs> not, what what is that? O- old timey. It was way further back than that. I don't even. know why. Where did even eighties come from? Anyway, the old timey cartoon style. Yes. And everyone was like, "Oh, it's like a, it's like a side scroller, or a shoot 'em up type of thing. It's, it's like like Mega Man and Mario when it looks so cute." No one expected the challenge and the difficulty level. Like I understand how sometimes that may be misleading, but eventually, over time, you're going to either learn how to play it or realize, hmm, this game is not meant for the casual player. And I feel like when you talk about different levels, whether you want to challenge, whether you just want to be easy. That's where the term, I feel like casual, you know, hardcore or somewhere in the middle comes from. Because I feel like your casual gamer, like you said, appreciates it for the story more often than not. You play play Mass Effect with the decisions being the only thing you really have to do. And a lot of the story beats are what drives it. Combat is super easy because that's one of the things they gave you later on in I think Mass Effect 2 and 3 (coughs) where you were able to pretty much make it. A story-driven experience, a yep. mix of the two, or the hardcore stuff with the story being there because that's the whole point of it. Yep. Now that, I feel like a difficulty slider like that, or even like you said on Doom, or I was playing Ghost of Tsushima the other night. I played on hard mode, predominantly, just because I feel like that's a good balance between the damage dealt, the damage given, and the difficulty for the narrative. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel like when it comes to the narrative in general, the game has to be difficult or else for me... And some others I know. But for me, who I'm speaking about, it makes like cognitive dissonance almost. Hmm. That's why sometimes when I go into those games, because I like a challenge. I like to be pushed. I like to feel the pressure. So that's why I'm, I, I would never ask for that. Also, marketing. I, I wouldn't expect to go to McDonald's and be like, give me a Whopper. What? Yeah, I want, I, I want a Whopper and I want... Yeah, I want your BK chicken fries. That's not what it's marketed as. That's not what it's sold as. Like that's e- exactly. Yeah. So then and you see these people. Oh my god! Hold on, hold on. I remember when Sekiro came out, and everybody was like, "These games need an easy mode. Soulborn <laughs> games need an easy mode. We need to. It needs to be accessible for everyone." And there was a dude that had, I think, it. He was like quadriplegic, or had like nubs for hands, and he beat. Sekiro, yep. while some person typing with all 10 digits yep. <laughs> and able I mean, to drive a car. It's all willpower. It is. It's and... willpower and like it's it's that drive to complete it. And I think one of the biggest things for like those sliding scales and such is also completionists like myself. Mm-hmm. Like whenever we start talking about video games, you'll probably start hearing that I love achievement hunting. I love just kind of sitting down with a game and I'm just like, I have beaten this like twice or whatever, but I'm going to play through it another time just to get all of those sweet little da-da-da-da. Yep. Another achievement. It's just like, yeah. It's a different way like, of hitting them dopamine centers. Exactly. And it's it's one of those things that like, there's those achievements, I think, really benefit from those sliding scales. Yeah. Because like the first time I played through Spider-Man uh, on the PS4. Yeah. Very v- fantastic game. I played through it the first time on I don't remember what the names of the It was like Friendly are. Neighborhood, Amazing, Spectacular, and then Ultimate. There we go. Yeah. Yep. I I played it th- I played through the first time on either Amazing or Spectacular. I can't remember which. Yeah. But I played through the first time on a easier difficulty than I could have because I love Spider-Man. I'm a huge comic book nerd, that kind of thing. But I wanted to experience the story just as I did, just as much as I did the mechanics of the game itself. Because the mechanics are legitimately fun. The combat's legitimately fun. It's but it's also well a made. really good story. But when I go back through and play through the second time, and I want to get all the achievements that I can, put it on easy mode. I'm not yep. trying to get through the story and everything because I already know what's going on. I'm not trying to, you know, experience the intricacies of the combat. I'm trying to hit a a, a super high combo. You're trying to web like five that. people to a wall with impact web within six seconds. Yeah, because basically. that's an achievement type of shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, it's putting it on easy mode and getting those achievements. I think is 100% valid, and it's definitely something that I do all the freaking time. Yes, but. One of those achievements is 
completing the entire game on ultimate difficulty, which I just did uh, about a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th- I think I texted you. Like, you did text me the about morning, that. The morning after because it was super <laughs> late at night and I just, I woke up and I was like, oh, it's a new day. Oh shit. I need, I need to text Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I asked you about the Miles Morales game because I, I, last we spoke, you were playing that, and yep. then after that, I was like, let me know when you beat Spider-Man. You mentioned it, yep. and then I was like, ooh, you're near the end, and then you hit me up, and we talked about the difference yep. between the two of them. And it uh, was, those two, I think, 100% are something that benefits from that sliding scale, because it is definitely an achievement to be able to say, yeah, I beat this on the on the highest difficulty. Yeah. Because I platinumed Spider-Man, and then went back and did all of the DLCs, got all the trophies for that, and then there was those two final ones that was playthrough on uh, New Game Plus and beat it on Ultimate Difficulty. So New Game Plus on Ultimate Difficulty. New Game Plus on Ultimate Difficulty, playing through, and I'm just like, oh, God, Doc Ock is... (laughs) Yeah, he's a tough son of a bitch. Especially on Ultimate Difficulty. Yeah. It's like one hit and a third of your health is just... (laughs) Just gone. And see, so... in. In the defense of easier modes on video games, with Spider-Man specifically, Mm -hmm. I don't play past superior or even amazing sometimes. Again, for me, it's the cognitive dissonance thing. I know Spider-Man could murder everybody in New York City. Oh, 100%. Easily. Like, if like you relatively at, easily. Like, and for any of the listeners that don't know a whole lot about like Spider-Man in the comics and such, there is a stretch where Doc Ock... Like, Basically possesses oh God, Spider-Man. I to talk about this. Yeah, where he he takes over <laughs> Spider-Man's body, and he's like acting as Spider-Man. And there is a point where he walks up to a, uh, I think it's a robber or something, just like yeah. some common criminal, and he punches him in the face, and he punches his jaw off of his head. Yeah, and, and then, he realizes mm. how easy that was, and he goes, "Oh, Spider-Man has literally been pulling his punches this entire time." He has punched me in the face, and I, in my original body, am not as tough as the dude that I just punched. Because I'm frail old scientist man who's like overweight Mm -hmm. and my body's falling apart. This is a young strapping guy who just robbed a bank or something like that. Yeah. And he just clocks him, jaw goes flying. And realizing that like Spider-Man has that much strength behind it. Like he is, for a time in the comics... There was only a handful of heroes that could like outdo him physically. Like when, I mean, still to this day, there's not many that can. Oh, well, especially not like if you're looking at at Earth standards kind of thing. Because there's only like back in the day, there was a comic panel that had him like with a steel plate like above his shoulders, and he's yeah, benching a one. bunch of heroes. And it shows like Hulk and Thor and like a couple other guys. And like it was meant to be like these are the only guys that are actually stronger than Spider Man himself. And when you're looking at like, okay, who's stronger than this character? The Hulk. Thor. Like maybe I think Cosmic level entities. Was, was he up there or something like that? I mean, well, Spider Man becomes cosmic eventually, so there we go. I mean, yeah, fair. But like but, <laughs> when you're looking at that those kind of characters and you take it back to this video game, mm-hmm. you're punching these thieves, these like common criminals or whatever, four or five times before and, they're finally dropping. And that's why I only play it on Amazing yep. or Spectacular when I'm really feeling myself if I've been on a Spider-Man kick because I know I can probably take them out the moment they're dazed with a web blast to the wall. It's over. So yeah. That's all it takes. But like I said, in defense of that... I'm totally okay with the easier difficulty because that makes sense for Spider-Man to wreck people two mm-hmm. or three hits, especially your common crook. Super, oh, yeah. You know, super villains, okay, takes a little bit more. But even like you said, Doc Ock has a fleshy human man body. Even those should be like, once I stick you a couple times, it's a wrap, man. But yeah. Spider-Man pulls his punches. So for me, narrative also plays a part in difficulty. But if I know that the narrative is... You are someone trying your damnedest, and you are in a world to fuck you. Literally, Dark Souls 3, you start out as a corpse. Yeah. You create your character, you come back from the grave, because you're dead already. Yep. Literally, you start off dead being resurrected, and then you have to work your way from the ground up. For DS3, that makes, that makes sense. I, I get it. I started from the bottom of the bottom, and then everything else that's undead has been 
absorbing the flame, has been corrupted, has taken the embers, has become twisted from the embers, has become an outright demon. I expect that to beat my ass. Or like, even in Doom, I expect Doom to beat my ass all the way too. But Doom is, it's a fun challenge. And like you said, it's the mindset. For me, I want to go back and, because I'm playing it on normal right now, I want to play it on hard. <laughs> then I want to play on super violence. Then I want to try the master levels. Just because of the fact that that combat loop, that resource management, that, I mean, honestly, the character design, everything else. I'm not going to turn this into a Doom Gush Fest or anything <laughs> else Gush Fest. We did but, that in another episode. Yes, but it's just, <laughs> it's so worth it because it's so rewarding, but not everyone sees it. And, you know, the more we talk about this, and as I was thinking about it, because I was trying to keep myself from talking it up between Kara my wife, for those that don't know and those that are listening, uh, and you. And I was like, oh, hold on, don't talk about it yet, don't talk about it yet. <laughs> but it really is the mindset. And I feel like people think that games are just supposed to be relaxing. But what people find enjoyment and relaxation in are entirely different. Yeah. Like, I can't enjoy a sim game, not necessarily just the sims, but any type of simulation game. I rarely enjoy them at all. I, I don't. And I don't. it's... The reason is because there's no... Well, that's that's wrong. That's wrong. The Sims I do enjoy, I said rarely. Let me give you a couple so you can yeah. see where I'm coming from. Civilization. Okay. When you say simulation game, that's different than RTS, in my opinion. Real-time strategy games like Battle for Middle-Earth 2, still one of the greatest games of all time, in my opinion. Stronghold, Stronghold 2, that kind XCOM. of thing. Where you're controlling, like, an army, or XCOM, where you're controlling, like, a platoon, and you're, like, kind of simulating a battle something like that that's different than a simulation game or a sim game where you're like seeing the cockpit of a plane and like okay. having to fly well, then, the plane kind of thing let's like, put it this way rts with sim yes, real-time strategy games. but also sims like jurassic park world evolution i was not a fan of that one i was a fan just because of the fact that the chat even though the challenges were a little bit wonky sometimes there was still a challenge there yeah and then again that game had variable difficulty built in immediately you had the first island which is your tutorial let's be it's just you're gonna get rich off it it's gonna be super super duper easy it's isla sorna the one from the new one i don't remember right offhand the second island is a completely dilapidated piece of shit which is like hey have you gotten have, have you figured out how to play it you have? Cool. I'm going to give you the most busted, broken island that has storms and fucks everything every single time. That was a challenge of strategy and resource management again. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I kept playing was because I was like, I have to figure out how to get this island up to a couple million per turn, just like the other one. After I did that, they gave me an island that was a sandbox one, which is the original island from the first Jurassic Park. And with that, the difficulty pretty much plateaued. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. I, there, there's no enjoyment because it's like... <clears throat> I'm just going to keep on letting things auto-generate. I'm going to collect enough money. I can just press X over and over and just have things do. That's, that's not fun. Yeah. Now, for some people, being able to turn your brain off, just push some buttons, watch cool things happen, watch T-Rexes pop out of doors and shit, oh, that, maybe that's all you need. Yeah. For me, my fun needs to be a bit more engaging, mm -hmm. I guess. And that's why, like, when we were talking about Jedi Fallen Order, mm -hmm. you had mentioned before that you... Uh, that you put it on harder difficulties so that it was more fun. And I 100% agree with you on that mm -hmm. because I have... The only achievement that I have not gotten on that game is completing, uh, scanning all of the enemies, and then I read online that that one is bugged. Yep. So, like, sometimes it just doesn't pop, which is super, fr super frustrating being a completionist and having an <laughs> achievement that's like, oh, you may not be able to get this one. Why? Because programming? Because. Like, That's not what I'm looking to hear. <laughs> but when I went back through that game, because I played it originally on, like, somewhere in the middle. Like normal, of, yeah. Yeah, nor kind of normal. I think it was, I don't think it was Jedi Master. I think it was, like, Jedi Knight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Jedi Knight. And then when I went back through and started playing it through again to get all of the achievements, I played it on Padawan, and I realized that the... There the is damage. moments there there is moments where I'm fighting somebody and they go to swing and I've already honed my reflexes to like get right in on that like uh, on that uh that on that hitbox on that window into that hitbox and it like shut that down and that kind of thing 
but like the one or two times where somebody might hit me with a, a bolt from a distance or something like that. And I kind of stumble a little bit and I realize that that window is so long <laughs> and it's like, oh, I don't need those, those super fast reflexes. So then I start to relax and I start to, and I realize it's like, oh, this, this combat's no longer fun. It's not engaging. Because it isn't, it isn't as engaging. And even though I was going through it for the achievements, I still wanted, like, because the, the combat in Fallen Order is legitimately fun. It is. It's solid. I, so just to enhance and slightly detract, Fallen Order and Ghost of Tsushima. That's where I was saying, like, that right there. Yep. The engagement in combat. The parry windows are significantly larger. It's unrealistic. It throws you off. You essentially don't have to pay attention. You can have a whole conversation with someone and then be like, oh, I got I to gotta parry. Right as you're getting hit and it'll still parry perfectly. It's like, whoa, 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 no. That's why putting it on the harder difficulty definitely makes it more realistic and also a lot more fun. Yes. The only problem that I had with um, Fallen Order is unfortunately something that you kind of can't fix in game design. And that was the fact that the lightsaber didn't really feel like a lightsaber. Felt like a light bat. Yeah. Like it didn't, like a lightsaber in lore is supposed to be able to cut through nearly anything. Like there's only a handful of things that it can't go through. And like, especially just flesh, I should be dicing everything in front of me. But if you give me something that's actually like, that the damage output is actually comparable to lore lightsabers. Mm -hmm. That's not a game. That's just a slaughter. That's the opening of Force Unleashed when you're walking around as Vader. You know, and just, I, I ah. have to, I have to, I have to disagree with that one. I really think Ghost of Tsushima perfected it. What, what's, what, what did you play it on? What's the most recent difficulty? Ghost of Tsushima. You, you played all of them, right? All the difficulties from easiest to hardest. Um, I don't think I've played all of the difficulty. I mean, I've, I've platinumed Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. I've gotten all of the achievements except for the multiplayer ones. Okay. Um, so I've gotten like Iki Island and that kind of thing. So I've, I don't remember if any of those achievements have you play through on the hardest difficulty. Did you play it on hard though? Oh, I put it on, I put it on hard for at least a little while. Okay. Um. S that, that, okay. Right there. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So Jedi Fallen Order. And Ghost of Tsushima, both of those games on hard, mm -hmm. are, I feel, respectively good representations of what that combat would be like. Uh, well, actually, sorry. Jedi has to be on Grandmaster. The only downside is that you take copious amounts of damage. Oh, yeah. Now, I say that why it's like a good representation of what the combat would be like. I mean, Ghost of Tsushima literally went to... War Masters, Bushido people, they, they went over to the to Japan to make sure that their shit was accurate. Yeah. Star Wars, you can't do that. But with that, the it's damage... It's real in my heart. It is, I'm, oh, don't get me. It's real in my heart. It's real in mine, too. <laughs> I, I don't want to disregard it, but I don't have a proto-saber even yet, so I can't argue it. I mean, there's there's one YouTube... I Hacksmith. Like, Hacksmith. Yeah, I'll was, watch it, too. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been following him for years. years. When you have combat, at least in, in Jedi on Grandmaster, aside from the damage you take, and on Ghost of Tsushima on hard, usually on Ghost of Tsushima, aside from people that are heavily, heavily clad in armor, and this is another game that they were like, I hope it's not souls boring because it's so hard. And I've actually had family members and other people be like, this game is kind of difficult. You, can, you turn the, can you turn the difficulty down? It's like, turn it up and it'll be easier. And they're like, no, 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 no. Yes, because if you have good armor... And you just dodge your sword, guess what? It hits like a sword. Not even a video game sword. You can kill people in three hits. Yeah. You can do a heavy hit, two lights, chop their arm off and watch them bleed out, move to the next. That's that's all it takes with a real master. And you're playing as a master yeah. swordsman. Now, even with Jedi Fallen Order, people will be like, well, it makes sense that he's not that good because he he's fucking gifted. He's supposed to be gifted and he's also wielding a lightsaber. Yes. Which... Like, at some point, we will have to do an episode on, like, the, the, logistics. the BS around that weapon. Because, like, it is ludicrously powerful. And there wildly is, inconsistent. Wildly inconsistent. But, like, there's there's people you can look up on YouTube. Uh, Kyle Hill does a couple of fantastic videos on, like, real lightsaber physics that I, I would highly recommend checking out. I've watched one where, of those videos, actually. Where, like, he describes 
the energy output that would be required for doing what a lightsaber does in the movies mm -hmm. would make it hotter than the surface of the sun and just kind of holding it next to you would just ignite everybody in the room. Exactly. And it's, it's one of those things that you kind of have to be like, okay suspension of disbelief like this is not a feasible weapon in real life okay bear with me in it though really no no not if you turn it on it immediately lights you on fire okay it, they're made from kyber crystals i understand energy <clears throat> beams lasers all that shit we don't have kyber crystals we don't know the genuine scientific properties of it I'm just no, saying, we don't we know. Don't. Yeah. But we know what it does. We know and what it we does. Know what, and we know how physics works. And the only difference between Star Wars physics and our physics as displayed in the movies, and even if you want to take it into legends and such, is the, is force. the force. So unless you want to say that every single st uh, lightsaber and every single blaster bolt has a an envelope of the force around it, to keep all of that heat and energy enclosed, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I guess you're right. So that, then going back to Jedi Fallen Order, if you were having that weapon be movie and lore accurate, it would be slicing through everybody in one hit, maybe two. So long story short, what they need to do is get a similar combat system back that they had, well... A similar combat system akin to the Force Unleashed. Mm. We we need the fidelity of a fallen order along <laughs> with the bombastic nature of a Unleashed to kind of get the hybridization if we're looking for accuracy as well as a decent spin on difficulty. Because like you said, even with Cal, really cool character, really cool game, really cool powers. Sick and fucking tired of fighting droids that do not have cortosis, that do not have what is the Mandalorian's armor made out of again? Oh, it's Beskar. Beskar, and the other metal. It's a partic It's a particular type of metal that um. they had in the mines when Luke and Mara were working together in one of the trilogies immediately after. I think it was the Thrawn trilogy, but they went directly into a cave and Luke tried to like poke the wall, short circuited his, short circuited his saber. They could do fucking nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just ore. So I'm like, unless these droids, unless every stormtrooper, you're not giving me a game that really gets me immersed. And then I got to turn the difficulty all the way up to Grandmaster just so I can be like, okay, yeah, we're here now. But bringing it back to like the, uh, the, the difficulty spread over multiple games and such, I think that the, idea, the, the phrase get good... <laughs> which cropped up around like Dark Souls and other Soulsborne games and that kind of thing. I think it cropped up around Dark Souls 1 because Demon Souls was first mm -hmm. and it was like a sleeper hit and then Dark Souls came <clears throat> out and that's when the get good scrub shit happened. Yeah, so I think that that phrase in particular is... Highly accurate. It, Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that I think is is used just as much as a gatekeeping bullshit as it is an actual, like, sorry, like, this is the way the game is, like, you, you either get good or you, you die, kind of thing. And I think that the reason why it's mostly used as, like, a get good kind of thing is, oh, yeah, I, I played through it, you know, on easy difficulty because I wasn't really looking for a challenge. Oh, get good. Get good, scrub. And it's like, okay, okay. what do you, like, it, games are meant to be enjoyed. If this okay. person just wants to relax and everything... Yeah. Shut up and let him do that. But that idea of like get good being used around Soulsborne games, I think is valid. Around Be Soulsborne, yes. Because it is there is no difficulty here. Or there is no difficulty slider here. Yeah. The game is how it is. The game and is the difficulties. It, the game is difficult. Yes. The end. And you are going to die. You are going to die a lot. If you play. If you have not played these games, they are designed specifically to kill your character. And to push you. Or, yet yeah, they are designed to kill your character. And honestly, that's the ultimate test of skill right there is, I'm not going to let you. 
Yes. I'm, I'm, now, for some people, that means rage quitting. For some people, that means selling the game. For some people, that means breaking the controller and spending $120, because now you got to buy another one plus the game you just fucking bought. Yep. More often than not, though, that, that sweet, sweet satisfaction, like you said, you spent 30 minutes. I remember when I beat the fucking dragon on Dark Souls 3. That was like the third to last boss. And I'm just like up on top of like this dilapidated tower. I got my character. He's all in the dark armor. I gave him the shield and like the dark sword. I had mm -hmm. everything maxed to the nines. I just did like raw damage output because that's how I wanted to run the character. I lost for three weeks straight. <laughs> three weeks. Yeah. And then one day, one day, something just clicked. Yep. And I was like, oh, nah, you're not getting me. Fuck that lightning. Fuck that lightning. Nah. Mm -mm. I'm rolling. I'm dodging. Let me drink that little health. Nope, nope. Get, get the flask. All right. All right. Come in. Wait a second. He stays on the ground a little bit longer if you die. Ate him up. Tore him to pieces. Yep. And it's those moments. That's rewarding. That is so... I feel like it's inherently more rewarding. Maybe for... It is more rewarding for the people that want to stick it out. For the people that like a challenge, it's more rewarding. Mm -hmm. But like you said, for the people that just want popcorn filler entertainment, that's yeah. not going to be rewarding for them. And I feel like that's where the get good sentiment comes in. If you're talking to someone and they randomly say get good when you're just playing a game, like, uh, okay, okay, just for context, to mm -hmm. keep, it, keep it fluid, Doom Eternal. Let's say someone's like, I beat Doom. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, what, what'd you beat it on? Did you try any master levels? They're like, nah, I just beat it on easy. I wanted to give it a try. Yeah. And someone says, oh, get good. What the fuck? You only beat it on easy? Yeah. Oh, That's just gatekeeping assholery. Yes, that is yep. unnecessary. That is rude. That is, n I shouldn't have even told you. Yeah. What's the point? You're yep. just being a dick to me now. Mm -hmm. But like you said, with the other things where it's marketed as you're going to die, get good. It, you can't get mad, and if you do take it personally, yeah, and there's honestly, a million games out there. Don't buy it. Oh, hundred <coughs> percent. Like it, it's one of those things that if you're if you're on an online forum or if you're talking with a bunch of people and you're like, yeah, I tried, you know, Sekiro or I, I tried Bloodborne or something, and I just I couldn't do it. I played it for like an hour and I died like a dozen times, and somebody just kind of goes, get good. Like, that kind of sentiment is unfortunately, I think, entirely valid, specifically because of the fact that it's like, if you knew what you were getting into, like, this is what you got. You, no. <laughs> you, you got what you bought. Shout out to my homie real quick. I'm going to send you this. Don't worry. I love you. My homie Depew, try playing Dark Souls with me. <laughs> Could not do it. We didn't even get past Iridux Girder, which is the first prologue boss. Uh, which... The dude that's stuck in the ground, and then you pull the sword out. He pulls the sword out, and then he starts swinging at you. And when you get him down to like half health, he turns like the big monster <coughs> dude. It's right before you get to the cathedral where you meet the blind maiden. Okay. It's, yeah. I don't think I played that one. Okay. Well, he could not get past that. Okay. And okay. we tried that for about a week, and like eventually, I was just like, "Get good." Come on, man. What you doing? I was like, you can stand back in the corner. He was like, but don't come and attack me. I'm like, then run. Yep. Bring him to me. There is strategy. I've beaten this twice now. Yep. Do what I'm saying. And then like he dies. And I'm just like, bro, what'd you expect? Yep. I told I'm I'm not saying I'm a master. I'm just saying I beat it twice. If you would have done it, you'd have been able to get past it. And we could have grinded this out and I could have got you some cool weapons. We stopped playing. Yeah. We we literally did not because that's another thing. It has co-op. But with Games like Dark Souls, uh, I'm pretty sure Demon Souls and Bloodborne, when you have co-op, everything gets that much more exponentially tougher per each character you add in. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can be like, oh, well, that doesn't make it easier. That just makes it harder. Yeah, but you have teamwork and you have someone you can communicate with. And, like, realistically, pragmatically, that does make it easier. Yeah. The game may scale the difficulty up, but it's not going to change the attack patterns that wildly. It's going to have the same attacks. It might attack faster. It might have a damage buff. But it has two health bars to eat through. That's the, there's a balance yeah. all the way, every time. No. It's, it's, it's whether or not you as a team can get good together. To, together. <laughs> and even if... Because there, there is... There's only so much that they can tack onto that monster yeah. to make it that much more difficult. There's only so much that they can do there that if you figure out that pattern, if you figure out the trick to, to beating this particular boss, then 
it doesn't matter what else they add on there. Yeah. It makes it so much easier. So for instances like that, you know, you looking at your buddy and going, shrug, hands out to the side, like, hey. eh, get good. Like, <laughs> that's that, in my opinion, is entirely valid because of the style of game it is and yeah. because of the fact that it's it's not marketed like Legend of Zelda or Mario mm-hmm. or something like that, where it's like, here is a game that you can take as seriously as you want. You want to be totally casual playing Mario Odyssey? Like, go for it. Have fun. Stick around. Mm-hmm. Do whatever. You know? You want to do that? That's fine. But as soon as you put in Dark Souls, as soon as you put in Bloodborne, as soon as you put in Sekiro, you better get ready. Yeah. Because it's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's actually another genre. I mentioned this briefly. I wanted to bring that up, too. And uh, honestly, this game in general, I have a few of them. Fighting games, I feel, are one game. That does, well, one one game, one particular genre that does have sliders and difficulty. Mm-hmm. All of them do. Yeah. There might be a few that don't. All uh, of them do. I'm yeah. trying to think of one that doesn't. And the only ones that I'm really thinking of are like the ones from back in the day. Yeah, where, like like the original MK on arcade. Yeah. Either and the like or, the, original the original Tekken. The original MK, the original Tekken, the original Street Fighter, that kind of thing. I don't think they had... Um, variable difficulty. They did not, especially on the arcade machines. It was, you no, get it as it is, not. you get good. So, with that, exactly. The original concept behind fighting games mm-hmm. was get good, either yeah. against the computer or put your quarters down and throw down against them. Or when they finally had consoles, have your homies come over and play. Now, some people can be like, well, you just contradicted what Mikey said. What are you talking about? That, that, it, that's not that type of game. You can't say get good. That's gatekeeping. Well, it, it's, it, 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 it's it's column A and column B. It's column A and column B because of the fact that like if you put in uh, uh, Demon Slayer right now, mm-hmm. and like you and I were just playing that a couple weeks ago, yeah, and <clears throat> like I'd say we're both pretty pretty good at that game. Yeah, I can waltz through even the harder difficulty. Very hard mode ain't shit. Very hard mode is not super difficult on <laughs> that game tough. if you have put in the time and the effort to learn it and everything. Also, if you like learn a particular character. Yeah, or well, a particular team in that me, one specifically. Yes, yes. Me with Inosuke and pretty much anybody else who's like speed-based and as my secondary. Inosuke for me. Yep. Or and, Tanjiro. Like, and it's, yeah, it gets super three. easy. But as soon as I went into ranked mode. Yeah. As soon as I even touched ranked mode, it was like, hmm, okay, you think you're good? You ain't good. And that's where the whole get good things come from with gaming, because there is always going to be somebody with the concept of fighting, martial arts, competitive things com- of mm-hmm. all nature. There is someone that's going to be better than you. So I feel like with the souls born genre that we've described, and you kind of get a feel for what we're talking about, you can Google it, I'm sure. You know, Cuphead, yeah, Doom, where it's supposed to be challenging to a degree, even on the easiest. Fighting games also fit that bill because you can beast it out on very hard. Doesn't matter. I'm good. I got this shit. Just like I was saying with Fighter Z, I had my team down. Vegeta, Frieza, Adult Gohan, beating the piss out of people all day, every day. Go ahead, activate the ultimate, death ball you, go ahead and hit you with the big bang attack, rush in, switch back out. I had the whole thing. I even went, like I was saying earlier, switch to Japanese servers because gaming is, <laughs> they, they literally dedicate statues, <coughs> sections of towns, and whole towns to gaming. So I'm like, if I want to test myself, I got to test myself against the people that wake up, breathe, eat, and drink this shit. And then when I was on it, 2019, after my first son was born, I was beating Japanese people. I stopped playing because I have kids and I've done nothing but get my shit pushed in ever since. Yep. Tried to hop back online and realistically, I can't get mad. I just got to get good because what the issue is, is I don't have the time. And that's not anyone else's fault to devote it to where I can stay on top of the cream of the crop like that. And I mean, if I really wanted to, sure, maybe I wouldn't be doing this right now. Or maybe I wouldn't have read all of Chainsaw Man. Or maybe I wouldn't have got caught up in all 358 chapters of My Hero Academia. You know, maybe I wouldn't have done those things. But I did. And because of that, I now got to get good again. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Because it's not anyone else's fault that I fell off. Just because life happens. And I feel like 
A lot of people take that super personally, but you just got to look at the medium of what you're doing and then look at that sub medium within the medium. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that mostly, that kind of stretches out into pretty much all aspects of life. Yeah. Where like, even if you look beyond video games and you look at various skills, Mm -hmm. you know, like I have, I have dabbled into blacksmithing and that kind of thing. I have a forge and anvil in my, in, in my garage. I have made knives. I've made various like... I, I've fixed a couple of automotive parts for a friend of mine. I've, you know, made like... You made the, that helm splitter. Oh, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, like, I've made stuff like that. And it's one of those things that, like, blacksmithing's not easy. No. It's not a simple, straightforward thing. Like, yeah, just kind of picking up the hammer and hitting it is easy. But also, you know, flicking an analog stick and pressing buttons is easy. But doing it right... And building up that skill, like in blacksmithing, if somebody was to be like, okay, you know, this is the thing you made, it's kind of crap, get good. Like on one hand, 100%. On the other hand, like, I mean, don't be a dick. But if the person is like, hey, I only just started a week ago and I want to make a full long sword, you know, get good. Get, you know, seriously, get good. Throw up your hands and just shrug and say, get good. But if you're like, hey, yeah, I just started a week ago and I want to make a couple of hooks to hold my curtains in place. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, that, go for it. You're That's, you're playing the Stardew Valley of blacksmithing. Yeah. When you want to make that long sword, <laughs> we're back to Dark Souls. Yes. There you go. <laughs> so you got to, there, there's levels to this shit, long story short. One of the best examples, I feel, that represents that is Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers, I have heard described as both, at the same time, the most chill party game mm-hmm. and the most precise brawler imaginable. Because so, it's, I was going to say, do you play on a regular? Uh, not a, not regularly anymore, but I used to quite a bit. Um, we should play play more often. I almost yes, brought my Switch should. over today. I, I got a Switch over there. Like, not right now, it's late. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But like it's it's definitely one of those things that I think if you are just playing at home and you have items on, you know, you have like the multi-level uh, uh, arenas and mm-hmm. you're playing anybody and that kind of thing, like have fun, goof off, do whatever. Like if somebody says get good in that situation, kick him out your house. No. If someone says get good to me on Smash. I ain't going to kick him out. I'm going to say, fuck you. Pick the next character. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> because so I play with like a... no items, Omega stages only, or that's, Battlefield. That's what I said, though. Mm-hmm. If you're playing with all items, multi-level mm-hmm. arenas, playing anybody, and somebody says, get good, kick him out your house. Oh, okay, okay. In if that you're, case, yes. If you're playing no items... You're Omega playing, and Battlefield. Omega Battlefield. You're playing like, okay, there's Meta Knight's banned because Meta Knight's broken as all shit in that game. Wait, is he still banned? Is he still banned? I thought he was only banned in Brawl because all of his shit was broken and had no way to stop it. The newest one? Like, that dude can jump, like, you know the, um... All of his uh, specials leave him stunned, actually. If you do any special offstage, oh, he dies. Oh, did they nerf it recently? They nerfed him. Oh, So he's that. viable now. Okay, fair. So... But I see the example you were making. Yes, the if someone, example yes. I'm making of like, of like Meta Knight back when I was playing more regularly. Mm-hmm. You know, banning him, that kind of thing. And playing that style where it's like, this is a super precise, like, like brawler that is just you, me, on the battlefield kind of thing. And that's it. No distractions. Somebody says, get good in that situation. Fair. Valid. Totally. Especially if they're kicking my ass. Yeah. Like, fair. And at some point... Um, we're gonna have Austin, we're gonna have to have Austin Maynard on here, um, <laughs> because he he play he is a Twitch streamer under the ra- under the name Re- the Real Damaco, mm-hmm. which look him up. He's great. He's a lot of fun. He is. Um, he primarily plays uh, Smash, Smash tournaments. Smash tournaments, and he is fantastic at the he game. He is. Yeah. He has kicked my ass thoroughly every single time I've played against the guy. I'm pretty sure he came over before to my place, and I was like, yo, let's play some Smash and some Fighter Z." Fighter Z, I was like, wow. No offense, Austin. Fuck you. Kind of want to kick you out. Smash. <laughs> it was 
decidedly more even. But holy shit! <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that he doesn't play more Smash the way he. Sorry, the more more Fighters E, just the way he. I don't know. Uh, the that, meta for things fall off. The Smash is forever, I guess. I mean that that guy has a talent for fighting games, in my opinion. He d- oh he does one hundred percent, and he's he is one of those guys that if he ever looks at me while we're playing a fighting game and says get good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, uh, fair. Nah. I'm like, fuck you, round eight. <laughs> fuck you, round 12. <sighs> I got that Vegeta short man complex. <laughs> Best 16 out of 31. Come on. Come on. You ain't got nothing but time. Bro, you have a kid, yeah, and I'm still playing. What's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely. There's, there's level... I mean, I guess that's kind of the whole point. Just as there's levels to difficulty, there's levels to this shit. Yeah. So I feel like the whole controversy or every time a hard game comes out, there's some pleb that only plays Mario three times a year and sits behind their keyboard saying, this is a gatekeeping experience that leaves out all players who want to enjoy themselves. Also, it's full of toxic masculinity. (laughs) Motherfucker. (laughs) So... When that's the case, I I tune out. Just go ahead and play your thing. Play Stardew Valley. Play Animal Crossing. Yeah. Play go get a go get a GameCube or a PlayStation. Two. Since or or four because it's it's on the digital store now. Get Harvest Moon. <laughs> you got options. I was wondering which direction you were going to be going. I, with I'm, I'm just guess. saying. And you, or or you could get fucking Sonic the Hedgehog. The 3D ones because they're super easy, really straightforward, nowhere near as challenging as the 2D. There's a lot of things out there, but you don't need to browbeat people that like a challenge. I mean, I think that for them, it's mostly like it's mostly views. You know, as long as oh, they yeah, throw in, the as long as they throw in enough buzzwords and you know to get it trending on the on the algorithm or just kind of get it in people's faces. Kind of like, like we're doing now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's the nature of the beast. Man. It is. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, extra points to anybody who can name that reference. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I get no points. Don't say the reference. Don't. Remember. Oh no, no, no. You're gonna, you're gonna like text me like a week from now, going, "You motherfucker." <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it, anybody who's who's like reviewing games and throwing that kind of vitriol around, either did not know what they were what they were reviewing, or wanted to get views more than they wanted to be honest. integral. Yeah, yeah. Because like I know when Doom Eternal came out and they were uh, really going on about the Marauder. Oh my god! I one of my favorite YouTubers. I actually stopped watching him. Like he, the upper echelon gaming. Really? Yeah. I think I've seen like one or two of his videos, but like I've seen a handful. He tends to go pretty in depth with things. He likes to go over the facts and the statistics a lot. I like that because it gives a background, uh, a different type of view to one of my favorite mediums and gives me a bit more insight in a way I didn't have before. But I've seen the trend he's gone on lately. He does not take criticism well. He does not do people critiquing his critiques. <laughs> Very well. Yeah. And he's really not the best gamer at all. Because in that Marauder thing, specifically that, just real... God, God. It's funny you say that, because I was just looking up the Marauder controversy, air quotes, the mm-hmm. other day, and he was like, the average player playing on a super, super violence mode, that sentence right there, the average player is not playing Doom Eternal on uh, super violence. Ultra They're, violence. Ultra yeah. violence. There you yeah. go. Yeah. They're playing it on probably normal, like me, to yeah. get a feel. Because this is the first Doom I've played since four hours of 2016, and before that, Doom 64. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let me go on normal. And now I'm gliding through that shit like a hot butter. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? I want to finish oh. it on normal. Now I'm going to go to ultra violence. Oh, you're you're going to turn it on to ultra violence, and you're going to immediately get your shit pulled it, pushed in. Because it, it, it's it's a massive curve. Really? Uh, oh, Hold it on. Is. It's fun. Oh, that much more ammo? Like, are, are, are they ammo sponges or... No, 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 like, are they ammo sponges or is it just they're that much more aggressive? They're that much more aggressive. Um, there's, in certain cases, more of them and they move faster. Oh, that's what I like to hear. It's, it is. It's more keeping up with them and, like, they, they do... I think they do also take more ammo as well, but it's... Yeah. Significantly or just marginally more? Um, like, what was it noticeable for you? 
it was noticeable when I was really looking forward, looking for it. But I think the biggest thing is the fact that they take a little bit more damage. They're a good bit more aggressive and they move faster, all being rolled into one. That difficulty curve spikes up significantly. And okay. that's when you get good. Right there. Because if you're playing it <laughs> on that difficulty, you should be expecting to be oh, yeah. the Doom Slayer yep. or get your shit pushed in. Yep, pretty much. That's it. But it's it's the the, the Marauder specifically was basically the uh, the the doom of game reviewers because when you're bouncing from game to game to game and you're reviewing a couple different genres and that kind of thing and you don't have that timing and that skill set like down pat for yeah. FPSs, the Marauder when it first came out was stupidly difficult, and they nerfed him drastically. Wait, what? They nerfed him? Why? How'd they nerf him? They nerfed him because of the fact that, like, it's... That green flash lasts mm -hmm. longer. Really? And it takes less effort to get him stunned. So, like, from what you're playing right now to what I was playing when it was first came out is a bit of a different experience. Okay, you say a bit. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. How much of a different experience is it? Um, it was... Because I feel like I'm getting fucking babied now, and that's annoying. <laughs> Bit. I don't want to get baby because people want to bitch and cry. Go on, I'm sorry. Because it, it was one of those things that when a Marauder came on screen when I was first started playing, it was like, oh shit, this guy's a boss or like a mini boss or something like that. Yeah. Now, when I, because I stopped playing for a little while, I was playing other stuff and then I came back to Doom Eternal mm -hmm. after that patch or after that rework had dropped, it was significant enough for me to be like, what? Why is he... Why is he already stunned? What's going on here? Okay, see, because like, when I... I caught him with, like, maybe half of the super shotgun blast and he's stunned. What just happened? Yeah, three super shotgun blasts and maybe two rockets is what it takes to stun him. And then I realized if you don't miss any of the shots, the dog doesn't come out. So if your shit is on point, you don't even have yeah. that. And then you just have endless ammo dumps in the fucking zombies that come out because you can chop them up. And then after that, if you have the chain shot, you can just zip past anything he does because he's not fast enough to get you. What are people talking uh -huh. about? Also, did you know that the fucking rapid shot plasma gun, the AOE, if you charge it up to all three, uh -huh. has enough to knock his shield and him back and stagger him. And then you can quick switch to the rockets and then you can blast him. And then if he comes at you with the shotgun, you can blow his fucking face off in three switches. Originally that was a